Um, I was kind of nervous when I first got asked to come up here, and then I realized I got to do I get to do what I do on a day to day basis, and I have been doing for the past uh, 15 years. Um, so two things. Um, I'm a community organizer, and I usually start off whenever I'm go out in the coal fields for the past 10 years. Um, if you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. So that's the uh, practical application. The uh, more theoretical application, I apologize about that. Um, I'm presently getting my PhD uh, around regenerative architecture. Is um, uh, over the the past 10 years, uh, philosophy has really informed uh, my work uh, all the way from Appalachian State to Central Appalachian and back to my home state. So bear with me on this one because this uh, quote definitely moves me and moves a lot of my work. To affirm is not to take responsibility for, to take on the burden of what is, but to release, to set free what lives. To affirm is to unburden, not to load life with the weight of higher values, but to create new values, which are those of life, which make life light and active. So uh, living architecture and following suit with uh, the rest of the speakers tonight. Um, I'm a, a community or organizer, as I mentioned earlier. And the easiest way to understand that is when I go into communities, I basically uh, generate or attempt to generate change. And what I mean by that is uh, differentiation within the communities. Um, uh, as a part of that, um, in order to sustain that over time, one has to develop a type of structure, a type of um, infrastructure, a type of architecture that captures that change over time, or else it's, it's nothing more than kind of symbolic activism. Uh, who is here um, concerned with climate change? Too big to fail, environmental justice, social justice, big government? and sustainability in general. I too share these concerns, and these concerns is what led me to coal country about 10 years ago. Um, over the past five years, I'm excited to say that a new proactive strategy as opposed to a rea reactive strategy has emerged. And what many people consider, and I'm proud to say the White House as well, as one of the most advanced transition strategies in the country for coal country. Um, and I'm going to kind of walk you through what the architecture looks like for Central Appalachia and then link that back to uh, my work uh, in North Carolina over the past year. So um, in the heart of the billion dollar coal field where I, I've spent uh, the last 10 years, uh, five years as a city commissioner, I uh, had the opportunity of developing uh, this platform and these are the four components of it which is Mingo County Diabetes Coalition, uh, the outreach component, Williamson Health and Wellness Center, which is the anchor institution or the clinic, uh, Sustainable Williamson, which is the platform for the uh, community ecosystem, and the Health Innovation Hub, which is a hub for the region for replicating the strategy. Um, so Mingo County, where is that? That's in West Virginia. It's in the southern part of West Virginia. Literally, when you're driving into the town, it says the heart of the billion-dollar coal field. This is where it all started. Uh, so I had a profound opportunity of working with visionaries in uh, Mingo County and throughout the, throughout the region over the past five years uh, to develop this architecture. And I've simplified this architecture, so please keep in mind that there's a lot of uh, c complexity or nuances that that allow for this, um, this strategy to maintain its resiliency over time. I've simplified it uh, through uh, the outreach clinic platform and hub. And you can go to uh, sustainablewilliamson.org, and it's broken down in a similar fashion. There's great videos, um, uh, reports, et cetera, that explains uh, the more com complex nuances. So as far as the outreach, which is one of our first programs, um, we, instead of focusing on energy or climate change and everything, we, we decided to focus on health and health and wellness and building economic development around that. So a part of the Mingo County Diabetes Coalition, um, some of the uh, projects related to that was uh, uh, diabetes uh, services, lunch walk program, which is one of my favorite ones, at 
several businesses competing with little pedometers, uh, walking around town and virtually uh, racing across the country to California. It was a huge success and still is today. And the farmer's market. Um, the other um, strategy that we uh, implemented about uh, three years ago is a clinic, which is a federally qualified health center. If you haven't or don't know about FQHCs, there's a long legacy of, uh, from Jack Geiger and linking the importance of health to economic development that was launched during the war on poverty. Um, this FQHC provides traditional services, uh, dental care, et cetera, et cetera. And we all, it's also linked to the preventative ecosystem to uh, basically if somebody has diabetes, not only giving them a prescription, but giving them prescription vegetables or getting them out walking and exercising. Um, this, uh, this local clinic uh, is also a regional strategy. It's the only clinic um, in West Virginia that has a HUD designation. And it's also uh, potentially being linked to uh, public schools across the region. Right here, the, the uh, red counties, uh, basically, or distressed counties, according to uh, the Appalachian Regional Commission, signifying that this is one of the uh, most impoverished regions in Appalachia and arguably uh, one of the most impoverished regions in the country. Uh, the platform is uh, more of thinking about how the city functions as a whole, all the linkages and how people are interacting with each other as a living lab. And it's not necessarily me or any of the community leaders, it's literally connecting yourselves with the community stakeholders that may have diabetes or drug addiction or whatnot. And it's from these interactions that it breeds innovations. Um, the platform's also designed in some way. What I mean by that is emergent design um, uh, for regional applications. So um, Sustainable Williamson is uh, presently replicating similar strategies throughout central Appalachia. And the intention is getting those communities to begin working together through a peer-to-peer -peer network to uh, kind of simulate what's going on in Williamson regionally to where um, a lot of those communities are sharing uh, innovative strategies. And simply the platforms is to replicate sustainability throughout the region. The hub is one of my favorite parts. Um, it's, uh, these are some of the organizations that are related to it. Amazaji Global Service Learning, Growing Warriors, um, who train veterans, uh, and Williamson Farmers Market. So I'm going to walk through um, here in a little bit the, the architecture of uh, platform to kind of simplify everything. But basically, this is not random interactions with folks, um, which is a fundamental part of it, but it's also intentionally linking these things to the anchor institutions that we've developed in Williamson in order to build uh, community resiliency. So... Work with me for a moment. This little simple platform is an actual community garden that we developed next to um, HUD housing. Um, so this is an example of a platform strategy that we begin that we're going to begin or is emerging uh, across Central Appalachia for replicating the sustainability strategy. And a part of this is um, Amazaji Global Service Learning comes in with labor and a very valuable asset, which is money to purchase infrastructure and all the building materials for building these community gardens. So these long structures right here are uh, high tunnels that basically extend the growing season. There's three of them. And the rest of them are raised beds um, for uh, locals to actually grow vegetables and everything. And it's really important how this is linked to the community. Um, across the road is a HUD housing. And remember earlier, I mentioned the uh, Federally Qualified Health Center has a designation for HUD housing providing both preventative and traditional services. Um, some of the residents are now growing food. They actively participate in the design for the, the community garden. The other component is um, the, the, the first high tunnel and some of the um, raised beds are actually generating revenue for the farmer's market to purchase infrastructure like chairs, signs, et cetera, et cetera. So we're trying to figure out like the market mechanism that sustains this over time. Um, the final component is uh, working with veterans and um, um, incubating entrepreneurial op opportunities to where they're being trained in these um, high tunnels to eventually start building this on mountaintop removal sites. Who knows what mountaintop removal is? Yeah. So getting a little emotional because this is one of my favorite parts. 
Um, we're linking not only veterans, but many entrepreneurs to begin re regenerating these lands. And um, no, they're not made up of toxic slurry. It's basically sandstone. You can build. Uh, nature's been doing it for millions of years, and humans can basically replicate that strategy on these mine sites to turn them into this. And so um, the top block, if you remember, is HUD housing. Uh, we're potentially linking some of the strategies for mine site uh, regeneration to low-income housing units and training um, uh, local folks that are transitioning from a coal mining job over to uh, sustainable construction. So as you can see, we got a lot of work. Uh, there's a lot of mine sites throughout um, central Appalachia that we can begin regenerating. Um, but the final part, I'm a designer, I'm an artist, um, so I'm going to walk you through um, w one of the uh, the funnest, I don't know if that's a word, um, my favorite part of, of this TED Talk is um, this, I, I guess it's an art piece, a design piece, uh, highlighting a process, and I'm going to quickly take you through as a synopsis for the Health Innovation Hub. It's basically intentionally um, linking all the network to um, these sites that I was mentioned earlier. And presently, there's a pretty substantial amount of impa impact investment, a huge amount of money getting ready to be invested into Central Appalachia from divestment campaigns all over from PNC Bank to Chase Manhattan, et cetera, et cetera. Coal transition is here. Um, so if you're an organizer, your job is to work yourself out of a job. That's what I did, and that's why I'm back here in North Carolina. Um, <laughs> So now um, I'm in the southeast region, and I'm going to walk through that design process that I mentioned earlier, although I was kind of out of order. And um, what my work has been for the past 10 years, arguably five years in central Appalachia, has been around sustainability, but I'm really diving headfirst into regeneration and design processes um, for the entire state of North Carolina and throughout the southeast. This TED Talk is basically the announcement of the launching of the Institute for Regenerative Design and Innovation. Uh, which is our nonprofit arm of Bioregion Innovations, which is a cooperative enterprise uh, representing about 115,000 acres of arable land right now and quickly expanding throughout um, North Carolina. So here we go. This should be fun. Um, so th it's a hybrid institution. And so they, they work together to create a circular economy. Isn't this great? Um, <laughs> So what, what this hybrid institution does is it has different layers or stacks. And you remember the Health Innovation Hub that I mentioned earlier for incubating entrepreneurs and other organizations or whatnot? Um, we're designing it in North Carolina to develop uh, innovation multipliers across North Carolina and particularly linked to infrastructure for agriculture. And these things are going to be showing up all over the state. One of the first ones, i um, happy to say that Tim is in the room right now, too. Um, he is presently working on uh, Cooperation Asheville, which basically incubates cooperative enterprises uh, focused around industrial hemp, regenerative agriculture, et cetera, et cetera. We've got another one, Winston, uh, Cooperation Winston-Salem, that's working in biodiesel and um, permaculture for integrating um, regenerative design into both urban and rural design uh, for like edible landscaping, et cetera, et cetera. And we have Cooperation Durham, which is also working on biodiesel, uh, biodiesel for schools across North Carolina. So these things act as kind of generators. You'll see them kind of generating and they're connecting with farm farms across the state um, and linking to them and linking it back to your urban area. Um, this actually ties back into uh, my work and many other practitioners that I'm working with uh, back to West Virginia. Um, so you remember the uh, mountaintop removal sites that I was talking about earlier? Um, one of my good friends in North Carolina, and he told me to mention his organization. So um, Louisville Permaculture Research Center. He is a former coal miner. He's from Logan County, West Virginia. I had the opportunity of working with him over the past year and developing a food forest replicable strategy for uh, developing co um, the specific code to replicate food forests and permaculture farms in my hometown that I was actually born in in Louisville. Uh, happy to be there. So we're going to be connecting that strategy and many other strategies 
being um, developed across the state. So we're going to all be innovating together to help transition coal country. Isn't that great? Can I get a clap? Yeah. All right. Um, so this is explaining that complex thing called a parallel processor. Um, so this is kind of functions as a parallel processor linking back and forth uh, between our farmers, all the other active stakeholders to regenerating both the communities as well as, um, so I'm gonna back it up a little bit and this is the weird part as we're coming back to North Carolina and we're focusing in and just giving you a really quick update on bioregion innovations. Um, we successfully passed along with North Carolina Industrial Hemp Association, one of our partners, Bill uh, 992, and we're, we're, we're working uh, with the uh, industrial or the North Carolina Hemp Commission in linking not industrial hemp, I don't worship a plant, as a catalyst for a, for a bioregenerative economy across North Carolina and throughout the Southeast. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>